Life's most valuable lesson. That's the conversation we're going to have today on Self Love Monday. How are you guys doing today? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. Man, today I got on a, uh, on a shirt with no sleeves and and I think I, I'm looking in the camera. I think I'm still sweating. Man, it, it is hot out here in Southern California. But we're going to make it through this anyway. So let's talk about this life's most valuable lesson. It actually came from a book that I read a, a long time ago. And I can't remember the title of the book. Wish I could because I definitely shared it with you. But what he talked about was everything in the world is either going to die or it's gonna break, depending on what it is. So the point of that whole conversation is for you to do that in advance, to let it die or break, again, depending on what it is, in advance. Now, if you're like me when I first heard that, I was like, I don't get it. You know, Why would I wanna send myself and torture myself on something that hasn't occurred? But of course, I'm going to read and find out and not try to assume and write my own stories. But what he said made a lot of sense, and especially, and I'll share with you guys, um, how it played into my life. And it had to do with the fact that there, you know, when I first started doing uh, self-development, learning about why we do the things that we do, why we act the way we act. And one of the things you'll hear from most people, if you go to any motivational seminar or anything like that, self-help, They'll tell you, cut all the negative people, negative, anything that's negative. You need to cut it out of your life. You need to get rid of it. And so I was like, yeah. So that was kind of my thought process. So I was going through that. And this particular person was one of those people that if you say red, they're going to call, they're going to say blue. If you say blue, they're going to say red. I mean, and it doesn't matter. It's on every single topic. They're going to get in a conflict with you because now their justification is because they're looking to gain insight on things and so they like to just challenge people and I'm like okay if that's the way you want to look at it for me I look at it as being pessimistic because if I got to argue with you on every single subject because you're just going to disagree with me not because you really want to know you just want to disagree um, I mean you can call it trying to gain insight uh, uh, if you want but for me that's frustrating because I'm not a person that likes to get into arguing with people about stuff there's a difference if you want to know my perspective then introduce it that way go well, why do you think that way or okay what if somebody were to say you know you see what I'm, you guys have heard it said many times it's not how you say it what you say is how you say it if you come at me in an attack mode like you're you're challenging what i said see that's a whole different ball game you're not asking my insight you're not asking me how did i get to that way of thinking you're not doing any of that you're coming at me from an attack perspective then the chances are that's going to be taken personal by people. And, and I've gotten better at not taking things personal and allowing that to go. But at that particular time in my life, I was taking things personal. And I'm like, I don't need this in my life. So I was ready to just cut that person out. I'm like, I'm done. I'm finished. You know, I don't need any negative people in my life. And then one weekend, this particular person, they were out of town. And I was trying to decide what I was going to do that day. And, um... I was like, well, I can't go visit them because they're out of town. And so then that particular comment in the book popped in my head. Everything will die or break depending on what it is. And so it made me think, what if this person, and not that I was killing them off, I'm just saying, but what if I could never, ever see this person again? And it hit me. And I was like, whoa, this person actually plays a major role in my life. This person has actually added a lot of things into my life, you know, through through the history of, you know, at that point in my life. And I was like, that's not a trade off that I'm at least willing to take. And I said, so how do I be able to still have a relationship with this person when I don't want the, the negativity stuff in my life? And that's when. I realized, I said, well, you know what? I'm arguing my perspective, my view, my opinion. And this person is arguing their perspective, their opinion, even though a lot of times it's not even their opinion. They just, again, like I said, they're just taking the opposite side. 
But still, I had to come to grips with the fact that they have the right to their own view, their own opinion. And I also have the right to mine. Does that sound familiar? Now you guys know where that, that conversation came from. My motto this is, it ain't right, it ain't wrong, it's my opinion. Yep, that's exactly where it came from. Because I went through that and I was like, so you're arguing to be right. And I also have, like, if for those of you who don't know, in my uh, clothing online store, uh, clothes2inspire.com, I actually have a shirt now that's there. It's a V-neck t-shirt, hoodie, whatever. But on the back, it says, love is, love is doing right, not being right. Same philosophy, same thought process. It ain't right, it ain't wrong, it's my opinion. And if you take that into your relationships, man, relationships start to really blossom. So the reason I thought this was something that was real important and, and it also holds true on Self Love Monday is because if you do this in your life and you start to really evaluate your relationships and, and most important, the one with yourself, because whether, whether it's a thought you want to have or not, but it still holds true, everything will die or break, depending on what it is. That includes you and me also. And so we have to, at that point, come to grips with that and say, I need to learn to appreciate myself more. I need to value myself more, love myself more, know that I'm enough, know that I'm worthy. And then it also comes into, you do start to say, okay, the people that I'm having in my life, can I just waste time when I know how valuable my time is? And I understand that I can't just give it away. And it becomes a lesson in, 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 again, realizing what truly is important in life. And so for a lot of you, you need to do this, especially with those in your life. We, we've heard that saying, don't, don't give me roses at my funeral. Give them to me now or don't give me flowers when I'm dead. You know, give them to me while I'm alive. Same, same thing. But that's what it's saying is, is I even saw one yesterday. It was pretty kind of along the same lines. It says, don't cry at my funeral when you don't even speak to me today. Folks, that's powerful when you really think about it. It's like, because we get caught up in our life. Um, I remember going to an event and they talked about, um, the guy made the comment. He said, I know some of you got friends and family, you call them up and, and uh, you haven't talked to them in ages. And the first thing out of their mouth, well, it's about time that you called me. And he said, and I know your first thought is, well, you didn't call me. And when he said that, I started laughing because I was thinking about a few people that I've called and that was their comment. And, I, and that was about to be what I fed back to them is, well, you know my number, you ain't called me. We wouldn't be talking now if I hadn't made the call. So, but what he said, he said, don't get mad at those people. He said, here's the difference. You've taken control of your life, which is why you took the time to call them. Life is actually controlling them and that's why they haven't called you. It's like, whoa, that's deep. So, but what I'm getting to in this conversation is learn to value you, learn that everything will die or break. Those people that once you go through that exercise, you understand their value, even if some people you have to cry thinking, because I know when I first thought about it, I'm not going to think about family member being dead or whatever. And again, I, this person's case, I didn't kill them off, but I did imagine what would life be like without them in my life. In other words, if I cut them off, like I was listening to all the people saying, cut all the negative people out of your life. Now, I do recommend if there's people that are like that. Now, what you could do is what I did is, is um, because I learned that phrase everyone has. I mean, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It's my opinion. When I got to that point, then when I'm around that particular person and they like to share their perspective or jump to the other side, I just stop and I'll just go. OK. Folks, as soon as you do that, they're messed up. And every time I did, I did or do this with that person, they're lost because they're waiting for the battle. They're waiting for the conversation of us going back and forth. But I control. Remember, we talked about the ability to pause as human beings that we have that that ability. See, I take that moment to pause. Stop, think things through and say, again, it's not about who's right. It's doing what's right. And what's right is I'm not here to argue. So 
since I know that's what your attempt is, I'm just going to, okay, that's cool. Because there's a difference in a person that wants to know. It's like I, told, like I was saying earlier. If you want to know my perspective or you're trying to gain information or knowledge, ask me and we can talk and I can share with you. I'm not going to argue with you, though. If I see that's where you're trying to go with this, okay. All right. And every time I do this with that person, they're stumped because then they're like, uh, well, so what else has been going on? And they why? Because they're lost because they didn't get, they're not prepared for that because they were waiting for conflict. See, I tell people all the time when they say you can't change other people. Indirectly, you can. Because if I change the way that I deal with you, then you have to change in order to deal with me. So like in this particular person's case, if I choose not to get in a conversation with you, then for us to continue our conversation, you're going to have to adjust. And that's basically the position I put them in. It's like, we're not going to do the way it, was, it used to be. You know, and, that, and I don't know why that popped in my head, but people are always, you know, like in our relationship, I want to get our relationship back to where it used to be. I tell people, no, you don't. Why would you ever want to get your relationship back to where it was? Where it was, got it where it is today. And if it, you don't like where it is today, why would you ever want it to be the way it used to be? The ideal is for it to be better than it used to be. And we address that through the two things that I've talked about before, accepting people as they are, which is number one. And then two is this communication that we're talking about. And that's recognizing you don't have to be right. It's about doing what's right. So that life lessons, folks, if you really take it and use it, and, and some of you, as soon as you finish watching this video, do that with some of your family members. And I know, and especially your spouse or whatever, what's your life going to be without your spouse? And if you guys got kids, then without their, their mom or then without their dad. Folks, and I know for some of you, you'd be like, I'm not doing that exercise, man. That's going to be painful. If you're not having the best relationship with your partner at this point, you need to do this. Because you need to realize the significance that this person plays in your life. Go make the adjustments in you. That's why, again, I'm doing this on Self Love Monday. Because everything I always talk about is always going to come back to it's about getting you together. You come to grips and understand the significance that they, they play. And then you make the adjustment. See, I didn't go and, and change the way I reacted to him to change him. I did it to change the way I took our relationship and the way I felt. And I said, I can change my part of the relationship and the way I deal in the relationship. And that's the part you have. That's why, again, this is Self Love Monday, because you said once you do that exercise, you can go look at the person in the mirror and say, Okay, what adjustments can I make? And in the process of making those adjustments, you'll see the adjustments happen in the other person. It's the same thing if you're a person that you use, you, you're always tearing people down, but you realize you're not getting good results. And it amazes me how many people use that philosophy and wonder why it doesn't work. And again, I know for some people, they, they, that, that's what drives them is being beat down. But I think that's a rare individual. I think most people go by praise. But the bottom line, if what you're doing is not working, then let's start trying something different. And if you change the way that you handle that particular person, you'll watch the way that relationship starts to change. Um, this is kind of like even another example, kind of getting off of this just a little bit. But it had to do with, because uh, I have a family member that it's, disrespects everyone's time. I mean, it's one of those, if, tell you that they're on the way and you may not see them for four or five hours. And... Um, and I remember they had to interact with me at one point and um, and people were like, well, you know, you know how he is. You ain't going to be able to change him. I said, no, with you guys, he gets away with that. With me, it's not going to happen. And they're like, yeah, already. OK, like, like you got control over that. I said, well, like I said. And so the first time that me and the person had to interact after I'd had this conversation with a few people, um, they showed up about two or three hours after they said they were they were going to be there and i just happened to be home that that day and i didn't have any other plan so but i confronted them instantly and i said let me let you in on something if you tell me you come in at a certain time i expect you to be here i said because my time is valuable i'm not going to dis. i don't want you to dishonor my time because i would never dishonor yours let me tell you what's going to happen next time that you tell me you come in at a certain time you tell me you come in at one if you're not there at one chances are i'm leaving 
and I'm going to do whatever I have to do with the rest of my day. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to call you. I'm going to return you the same favor by not, not telling you nothing. I'm just going to leave. And you're just going to make the drive over here for nothing. And I don't have a challenge with that because if you're not going to honor my time, then I'm going to return the favor to you. Didn't have any more problems with that person from that point on. They, even if they were running behind, they would call me and say, hey, you know what? I, I had to stop over at, at such and such and I had to grab this, but I just want you to know I'm about 10, 15 minutes. Folks, that's all people are asking is just honor and respect. But don't tell me and disrespect me. And so, folks, that's what I'm saying. I didn't change the person because they still do that with everyone else. But like I said, they weren't doing it with me. And that's, again, about the self-love. You got to learn to value you, value your time, know that you're worthy. And those that are willing to waste your time, you need to put them in check and you need to let them know. That's, again, the, the conversation when we talk about when I and again, again, this is a little off the subject. But when when I have ladies talking about, uh, uh, you know, they're dating someone and they don't know where where they stand in relationship. It's the same thing. Why are you wasting your time? Find out. Where we are, why? Because I want to know. Are you in or are you out? And again, that's not saying it ain't going to hurt if they say they're out. But find out now before you put a whole bunch of time in and then find out two or three years from now, they're out. Let's get through this quickly so that we can get back on track and go find the person that's willing to walk the right path with us right now. So anyway, take that life lesson, folks. Use it. And you will learn to appreciate. And it's not just people. It's the things, the cars, the home, all the things that, that we start to take for granted, which is most things. Anything we've had. And again, that's one of the reasons why people say, why do people step out and cheat? It's the same thing. Anything that you you have for a period of time, if, if everything stays the same, quote unquote, boredom is what steps into your life. And whenever people feel what they call bored, they will find something to try to replace that boredom. Unfortunately, some people that cheat go look outside to address that boredom instead of addressing that with the person they're in a relationship with and getting that boredom addressed inside. This is not a, because guys need to go out and, and, and chase and hunt. That's all garbage, as you guys know my perspectives on that. But some of it is being bored or whatever and instead of addressing it inside the relationship they're looking outside because again we do things for one or two reasons avoid pain or gain pleasure so they're out looking for pleasure instead of finding the pleasure inside the house but anyway practice that and then i'm gonna close here with um something that, and i came across it today and it was um and it's just something i did want to share and it was something i had heard from td jakes a long long time ago but the conversation was uh the enemy in a me. You guys follow that? The in a me, E N E M Y, in a E N, wait, E N, and the E, and then it's M E. So the enemy is in a me. So, and basically what it says is, 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 is talking about is just what it says. That voice that we hear about all the time and, and the conversation that's going on. And it's saying the enemy is, is there. And I remember when I did that the a, a conversation that long time ago, and I was like, yeah, that's that voice and stuff. But you guys have heard me talk recently more about the voice and coming to a better understanding. But one of the things that I did want to change on my perspective on that is I understand when people are saying the enemy is enemy, is they're saying because it will stymie you, it will stop you. But the reason I don't call it an enemy or I don't call it any other negative words that people want to call it is because the same people will tell you the brain, the, you know, is, is designed, the mind is designed to uh, protect you. And so because of that, it will limit um, anything that it thinks will put you at risk. And so my thought is, well, why would I call it an enemy? And why would that be a negative? Anyone that's trying to protect me, why would I look at them in a negative perspective or have negative thoughts towards them? That's not an enemy. That's not a negative. But that's not. Now, what I have to get good at, as we keep talking about learning to pause and think things through, is recognize this person is always, and that's the voice, is always trying to protect me. 
So a lot of times it's going to take me in a path that's not going to be productive for me because it's trying to keep, really keep me from taking any risk that it thinks we might get hurt. Again, I'm not calling you my enemy because you're trying to keep me from being hurt. I appreciate it. That's where the ability to pause comes in, where I get to step back, think about it, and say, huh, is that good information that was just shared with me? Or is it limiting beliefs that was just shared with me? And if it's limiting and it's going to keep me from getting where I want to go, then I'm able to tell the brain, the thought, whatever you want to call it, and sit there and go, thank you for sharing, but this is what I'm going to do. And then I get to make the decision to go forward. But to make it an enemy or to look down on it or be negative about it or one of the things I was just listening to, uh, you guys have heard me talk about uh, Michael Singer's book um, where he talks about the untethered soul, which is good, and it talks about the voice. And he's basically saying the same thing as being able to sit back and observe the voice. And that to me is, is really what this is all about, is being able to sit back observe what it's shared and realize is it wise counsel that's being shared or is it someone who's trying to protect me because it's afraid that I might get hurt and in life you got to be willing to go out here and take some risks we know that's true in relationships because if you're afraid to take risks then you can never get a relationship that you'll ever be fulfilled in and you'll really ever really enjoy because the fact is you're afraid to open up and go out and, and actually enjoy life so, but that was just something I came across today and I was like, man, I want to, I'm going to share that even though it's a little off target of, of, of we're saying um, here by learning life's most valuable lesson. But that's a valuable lesson too if you, if you take it in and understand, quit looking at that voice inside as an enemy, understand it's there to protect you. I just have to be mature enough to weigh if what it's saying, and that's why I said even when people share things with you, I don't even care if you don't if you dislike the person, being able to take what people say and weigh it and decide if it's there to help me or hurt me, because even sometimes people that don't that you may not like or dislike what they stand for, or whatever, they may be sharing wise counsel, but if you shut them off because of your feelings towards them, you lose out on wise counsel. And you got to be willing to say, let me take all the information in. I might not even like the way you presented it, but I'm able to weigh it and say, is this information good? Or is the stuff that I'm going to let slide down my back because I know the intent. The intent in this particular case, when we're talking about somebody else, not the voice, someone outside of you, their intent may be to harm you. I'm able to let that stuff roll down my back and keep going. The voice is trying to and understand it's trying to keep you out of danger. It's trying to keep you from getting any kind of pain, anything that it perceives to be pain. You just have to say, OK, that's a pain I'm willing to go and, 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 and conquer because I understand the benefits by going forward and not allow the voice to make that decision for you. So anyway, main thing for the day. Don't make the voice your enemy because it's not. And then but most important, practice that life lessons for people that are in your life. And chances are you're going to be on the telephone in a few minutes after you do that exercise, calling people up, talking about, like I told you guys, the story that switched me in my relationship with Terry. When I had that, that now that was a nightmare when I had the, the, the dream that I caught her cheating. I was on the phone instantly. Like I said, it was 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And I was saying, I love you. I love you. Yeah, that was a wake-up call. Same thing. That exercise may hit you to a point to where you realize, I need to tell people more how much I actually care. And that in itself is going to add more value to your self-love because in the process of reaching out to others, and we've all heard that before, go give people what, what it is you want and you can get it back. Although, like I said, I'm not a person going to tell you to wait for that because I can't wait for them to love me. But... I have to love me first, whether they do or not. But at the same time, if you go give it out, you will get it back. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who we talk on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you on Thursday. And for the, those of you who we just said to the self-love and value in ourselves, I look forward to talking to you on Monday. Now, 
again, whatever you do, make sure you you understand that if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I will talk to you guys later. Take care and enjoy this journey. Bye-bye.